alternating current versus direct current in welding. Alternating current is the electrons flow back and forth. So back and forth and you'll have both positive and negative cycles or positive and negative so polarities I should say. 60 hertz or cycles per second is what is used here in the US. Uh, it's more of a 50 hertz in Europe. And then we use AC for TIG welding, aluminum, and magnesium. And it actually can be used for like TIG brazing, but these are the two big ones, aluminum, magnesium. Stick transformer machines, not really the preferred method for stick, but if you want to buy a cheap machine uh, that you can run a couple different rods on, um, on AC, uh, get a transformer, okay? Direct current. Electrons flow in one direction. The polarity can be positive or negative. DC is by far the most preferred method for all processes due to the continuous arc uh, that it creates. Okay? Stick usually is DC positive. I'm just going to underline that. In most cases, stick is DC positive. When in doubt, DC positive. If you're going on some thinner metals with maybe like a 6013, yes, you could use DC negative. But if you're training, just go positive, positive, positive. 6013, 7018, 6011, 6010. You know, 6011 actually can be used on uh, AC. But there's a lot of rods. Positive is uh, without a doubt the most common. MIG. It's already set on the machine. You're not twisting DINs connectors in and out. It's going to be DC positive for solid metal MIG welding. Okay, uh, Flux core is a little bit different. TIG, when in doubt, go DC negative. DC negative. Okay, Again, this is the exception. So if it's steel or stainless, nickel alloys, or any other oddball metal copper, DC negative, okay? Flux core is usually DC positive with dual shield and DC negative with self-shield. So this one is half and half almost, okay? So if you're a self-shielding kind of welder, you're doing a home project, you get one of those little Lincoln 140s, you're probably using a self-shield wire, DC negative. And if you're doing some heavy-duty, thick metal, you're doing some dual shield welding, it's going to probably be a DC positive. There are 1 through 14 wires, so they can vary. And the difference between them. AC. Let's explain this a little bit more. So we have uh, positive and negative, back and forth. These electrons are flowing back and forth. Okay. So positive side, negative side. This is 1 60th of a second. So if we cut that in half, this would be 1 1 20th of a second. So there are 120 direction changes per second. So we're going positive, negative, and then we start over again. So one, two changes per cycle, 60 per second. Two times 60 is 120, okay? Worth mentioning, there is no arc here, here, here. This is zero, okay? So that's why we don't especially choose AC welding for like stick, okay? Because th there is no arc. We fire it up. We get some heat. We get our good heat up here. It's going down. It's tapering down. We're losing our heat. Arc goes out. Switches. Now we're on the negative side. Electrons are flowing a different direction. You get to the peak. You're getting your peak heat here. They start dropping off. You get here. There's no arc. That's going to happen 120 times per second that arc is going out. So if you do use AC stick rods, you actually probably need to jack up your heat, your current, to maintain that arc. It could stick on you otherwise. What machines are capable of AC? Transformers, obviously. Transformer rectifiers, inverters, and engine drives. It just depends on the machine.
okay? So not all inverters can do AC. Not all transformer rectifiers will do AC. Maybe they just run DC, okay? Um, it just depends. What AC really means? DC, direct current, is preferred for most welding. I already mentioned that. Uh, machines that are capable of DC is anything but that transformer only. Okay, so we can transform, but do we have a rectifier? So we need some type of rectifier. Here's a bridge rectifier here. Those are diode symbols. There's four diodes. And all we're really doing is kind of rerouting this power. So really as your, if you wanted the weld DC positive, you know, you're getting the positive here. And as that starts to drop off, we usually have capacitors that fire. And then we get here. And all this does is it reroutes that to be positive. So it looks kind of like this, but then those capacitors kind of pick up that difference. So when you think you're welding DC and you're like, oh, it's a perfect 90 uh, amps or 100 amps, it's really not. You're getting a little bit of a wiggle in there. So it's kind of going up and down. Um, not really important for this class, but worth understanding. Okay, so that is uh, DC. Again, transformer rectifiers, inverters, engine drives are capable of running DC. Electrode positive. What DC really means. And then the last is the direct current electrode negative versus direct current electrode positive. Okay, so I'm going to start down here. That's a battery. Okay, double A battery. You put it in a flashlight, whatever. Your electrons are flowing out the bottom and going to your positive terminal. Okay? The bottom is a wider circle, which creates more surface contact with that spring or whatever. And so we can get that ease of flow of electrons, no problem out. And then as long as they make that complete circle, we have a circuit, then they'll flow back and the flashlight will turn on. So we're going negative to positive. So keep that in mind. Here is a stick electrode I have right here. And if we say it is direct current electrode negative, the electrode is negative. I put a little negative sign here. That means our base metal has to be positive. 70% of our heat will be here because our electrons are flowing from negative to positive. Wherever the electrons go is where the heat goes, okay? This is also known as straight polarity, direct current straight polarity on older machines. So if you see DCSP, that's straight polarity. That's the same as negative. Direct current electrode positive, also known as reverse polarity or DCRP, is just the opposite. So when we stick weld, most of the time we're running DC positive. We are creating a ton of heat on the rod which is going to help melt that 6010, 7018, whatever it might be. And you're still going to get plenty of penetration. There's no worries about that. You still have a hot arc coming off of that. Um, even though it seems like it's going down, it's really electrons are flowing the other way. Okay, so the electrode is positive. Base metal is negative. Electrons flow negative to positive. Okay, so that is direct current electrode negative and